Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Kelsey Hammer. I'm a librarian at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, all the way from the East Coast. And today I'm going to be talking about a new program that we're launching at UNC, and more specifically, a new media that we're using to engage students with connected learning, design literacy, and library resources. Now, the reason that I haven't said the name of this presentation yet is because in a second, I'm going to draw a line in the room, and everyone's going to turn on each other, and it's going to get crazy. Um, <laughs> but what I tell my students is we have to choose one. So today, I will be saying GIF. I apologize to all the GIFers out there. Um, but we have to choose one. So what is a GIF? Uh, it's an animated looping image. They're really popular. I've actually seen them across the conference this week uh, in presentations, seeing people making them. They're super awesome. They're usually three to five seconds long, really, really popular on social media sites like Twitter, Reddit, and Tumblr. But what I always tell uh, facilitators, students, and teachers that I'm working with is that GIFs are more than just a format. They're not the dancing baby. They're not the like angel flapping wings. Or they go beyond even BuzzFeed articles. GIFs are a new and developing medium. And the reason for that is because they capture something that only motion can capture. They capture art, humor, reaction, and emotion. They tell stories in a different way. It's the difference between a smile and smiling. And so we wanted to think about what would it look like at UNC if we created a gift making and sharing competition? What if we had students capturing their culture around them, sharing it with others, and spreading their community and engaging with one another through gifts? So we came up with something called Gifable UNC. So Gifable UNC is about becoming GIF-able, developing design and digital literacy skills, but also looking for Gifable moments in their community and sharing those with each other. And we wanted this to be something that would really engage students. They have unlimited entries, and they can vote, and everyone gets to see what's going on in their community. Now, sometimes teachers ask me, why GIFs? What's important about GIFs? The first thing is composition. At its basis, composition is about telling a big story in a small space, and that's exactly what a GIF is and students can learn that skills with gift making. It's also an exercise in perception. It's an abstract form. You only have three to five seconds. You have no sound. And so you have to decide every single frame what is going to be important and how it's going to be perceived. It's also an invitation. Say you're a student working on a student film or you have a portfolio. You can make gifts of that and tweet those out and invite others to come see your work, come see your research, and come see your art. It's also a great community object because we have students capturing their community, but also sharing their community online in a digital world. So we ask students, go out. If you've got a, a club or an organization or your protest, go and gift that, and then come back to the, your digital community and share that and begin discussions, begin discourse about what's happening at UNC today in 2017 and also in the past. We wanted students to also develop design and digital literacy skills. Students can learn things like placement, uh, like how much white space I should use, what kind of text I should choose with design skills like GIF making. Now the big question I get is how you actually make GIFs. At UNC, uh, students have access to free Adobe, so we use things like Photoshop, Premiere, and After Effects. But you can actually take any video or photo on your phone and put it in a Giphy app or on the Giphy Creator online and make a GIF really easy. The next question I get from teachers is what kind of material should I use? We tell teachers, have your students film each other, have them go to their community. We also partnered with UNC Archives to bring out primary sources and archive material and have students make those archive materials come to life. The next question is sharing. We want students to use our hashtag. We want them to text these gifts to each other. But we also wanted to have an online forum where they could go and download any gifts that other students make so they can share those out with each other as well. And so the most important thing that I want to share about empowering students to make gifts is that we're building a new language. You think about this week, they added a bunch of emojis to our phones, right? But we didn't get to create that. We get to create our own digital language with gifts. In a social, digital, and visual world, we are creating this language together. We can make this language equitable. We can make it diverse, fun, engaging, because we have the power to choose what those words are and how we communicate and what that looks like. And so I think my favorite thing about Gifable UNC and about gifts in general is that they're a great tool for connected learning. They engage with the community, with self-interest, with openly networked tools, um, and they're also a great way to share other connected learning projects that you might have because they're also great tools of invitation. And we're also creating a forever moving portrait of what UNC is like. All of the gifts that are created are being put into the archive. So later, someone will look back and say, this is what 2017 was like. And I know that because I can see it. And I'm also seeing it in a media form that is specific to 2017 and to the modern age. 
And so I invite you, uh, there were no gifts in this presentation because I invite you to check out the hashtag and see what our Carolina students are making and how they're capturing the UNC community. Thank you. <laughs>